Now, the Scottish National Party will launch their election manifesto this morning, promising to make Scotland's voice heard and deliver progressive politics for people across the UK. Well, Stuart Hosey is the SNP's deputy leader, and he joins us now from Edinburgh. Mr Hosey, good morning. Thanks very much. A couple of headlines in um, the papers this morning suggesting that uh, the SNP will hold Britain's defence to ransom over the renewal of the Trident nuclear deterrent. Is that what you're going to do? Can you just clear that up for us? No, I'm afraid these stories are completely false. I mean, our opposition to Trident is very clear indeed, uh, and we will, if uh, push comes to shove, vote against renewing Trident, but we won't be holding defence to ransom. We'd actually like to see long-range maritime patrol instead of uh, chopping up the fleet we had. We'd like to see aircraft for our aircraft carriers. We need a proper, strong, conventional defence force. I'm afraid the stories are simply wrong. But you yourself have said the party was looking to vote against or table amendments uh, to budget estimates, spending estimates, if they include the nuclear deterrent. So in other words, if you don't get what you want, you're prepared sort of American Congress style to hold everything up and stop the money getting passed through. Well, we've been very clear indeed on this. In the absence of a confidence and supply arrangement, perhaps of a minority Labour government, uh, we would be at liberty to vote for the things we wanted, uh, to vote against the things we didn't like, and of course to table amendments uh, to make sure that uh, the policies that were actually implemented uh, were in the best interest of everyone in the UK. So you would block specific government spending if it didn't suit your purposes? Well, that's what happens in the Westminster Parliament. Parties table amendments uh, to try and make legislation better. Uh, we would do that, and if the opinion polls are right, and if the SNP do as well as the polls suggest, then we'd have the same right to try and get our policies implemented as any other party. Uh, that's the way the system works, and we will work within that system to try and deliver what we believe is in the best interest, not just of Scotland, uh, but of everyone in the UK. So, in effect, you could be then holding the government to ransom, and specifically speaking spending on defence to ransom, because you'd say, I'm sorry, if you let the, the Trident nuclear deterrent get renewed, we're just not going to approve any military budgets. You can do that, can't you? Well, I, I, well what we've said is we would table the necessary amendments uh, to try and strengthen and improve legislation in every field, not just defence. But I think it's important that the public understand the UK doesn't have £100 billion uh, to waste on weapons of mass destruction. Uh, that money could be spent on far better things, not least conventional defence, uh, so that we have, as I say, uh, long-range maritime patrol. We actually have aircraft that can take off from our aircraft carriers uh, and the troops we send into conflict are properly equipped and supplied. Just how far would you go then uh, with that tactic? Would you be prepared to bring down a government over the question of Trident? Well, no, this isn't about bringing governments down. This is uh, about strengthening governments and making them better. Uh, remember, if a coalition deal has effectively been ruled out, it was always the least likely outcome. Uh, so if there was a confidence and supply arrangement over five years, we'd have to agree on many things, but clearly we couldn't agree to spend £100 billion on Trident. If, on the other hand, this was done on a vote-by-vote -vote basis and there was no deal, uh, we would be at liberty to support those things which were good, uh, to strengthen policy where we could, uh, and, of course, uh, quite normally, naturally, uh, to oppose these things we disagreed with, as every other party in Westminster it came does, to, and if, I'm if, sure if, will do in the next Parliament. If it came down to it, would the SNP be prepared to let, say, a Labour government fall from power over the question of Trident, yes or no? Well, if there wasn't a five-year arrangement, it wouldn't be about a government falling or not falling. I mean, what we want to do is actually have a proper working arrangement, perhaps with a minority Labour government, so we can deliver the best for all the people in the UK. You see, if I flip that question around, the question should really be to Ed Miliband. Is he prepared not to speak to the SNP? and give the keys to 10 Downing Street back to David Cameron. Uh, I, I, I suspect he doesn't want to be the handmaiden of another Tory government, and neither do we. So let's have right. proper, sensible discussions about how we do the best thing for all of the people on these islands. Finally, how much closer does a vote for the SNP bring another referendum on independence for Scotland? 
Well, this election, general election 2015, is not about independence. We're not seeking a mandate for independence, and this isn't a rerun of the referendum. This is about holding Westminster to account so they deliver on the promises they made, strengthening Scotland's voice and essentially ending austerity for everyone in the UK. We simply can't afford another five years, another Tory government, another 30 billion of cuts. That's at the heart of our message today. Stuart Hosey, thank you very much.